Oh man, it is finally time. This project has been two years in the making. This art's from Deadpool issue number seven. It's drawn by Gerardo Sandoval. I just love this perspective of him flying through the air, just like. How do we take something complex like this and turn it into wood? Well, let's start by getting rid of that busy background. Okay, that's better. Now we can see what we're working with. I see a lot of reds, black, browns, blues, silvers. Silvers are gonna be a tough one. I also see a crazy amount of perspective. You've got his hands out, his body's in the back. His knees seem to be way out in front of everything. His shoes are probably the furthest back. This is gonna be the toughest challenge yet as far as the width thicknesses and making sure that I get all that perspective right. But before I get ahead of myself, we gotta start somewhere. It's kind of like our shop's motto here. Before you go someplace, start someplace. The more you know. I gotta pick out a background for Deadpool. I don't wanna devote this much energy, this much time, all that work into something and go, I wish I would've picked a different color background because you can't just replace it, right? I don't know about you, but I'm ready to do some scroll sawing after all that prep work. So I've got my artwork here, and I also have my black and white version. This is the one that I'm actually gonna cut out. Now, whenever I'm done with all that, I'm gonna glue it onto this panel right here. This is some MDF with Winge veneer that is glued on one side, cherry veneer on the other side. This is gonna be all the negative space, all the shadows for my project. What I do like about cutting out backgrounds is I can be kind of liberal with this. I'm gonna cut on the outside of my black lines and well, if for some reason I stray off course, it's not a big deal because this is gonna be the shadow of the picture. So you can't really do it the wrong way. It just looks like there's more shadow behind them and that actually makes it look a little bit cooler sometimes. Silhouette looks pretty good. Now I get to make Deadpool. I also have my, my off cuts, right? So I'm gonna keep those, that way I can uh, use those for alignment as I make each piece. Now I'm looking at my picture and obviously it's a whole lot of reds. So when it comes to the woods, I'm thinking Bloodwood, Red Heart, maybe Babinga, maybe even some Purple Heart. I can pretty much start anywhere, but I'm thinking the hands. The reason being is because they feel like they might be a good middle ground. His hands are out, so they're sticking out from the body, but they're not as far as his legs. His legs are sticking way out, right? So it's kind of in between. So if I figure out whatever wood thickness I want to have for the hands, and then I know if I start working on his body, I should make my boards a little bit thinner. Whenever I get down to his lower body, I'll make them a little bit thicker. That's my plan at least, but as Tyson said, everyone has a plan so they get punched in the mouth. Just what I was worried about. My blade is completely gummed up. Brand new number five crown tooth blade. It's a great blade. It's just, this wood is so oily that it just gums it all up and like, we're not even using very thick pieces either. They're all, you know, quarter inch or thinner right now. So I kind of expected this. So absent number five reverse tooth blades here that I'm gonna use. Uh, these are great blades. It's just, way more aggressive than a crown tooth blade. So um, it'll be fine for here. I do worry about some of the, the fine detail to work. I'm gonna have to do later on. I'm gonna to cut some very small pieces, but that's kind of a future me problem. So yeah. I decided to use Bloodwood for the brightest red. So right now I'm starting with the hands. Now, after I get all this done, I'll figure out where else that bright red's gonna be at. I don't know. I'm actually just playing this whole thing by ear or eye. Well, future me here, uh, or present me, but I used to be future me, or I was future me, or I am future me. I already have to do some detail work. Uh, cutting the hands and the wrist, I'm already starting to have to cut some really small pieces. And they're gonna be fragile, and they're gonna break uh, if I don't do something about it. So here's what I do is I just have a piece of MDF here. 
I have a piece of MDF here. I'm gonna slide it onto my blade and it gives me a zero clearance work surface for me to cut all my pieces on. I'm gonna keep trying to use this reverse tooth blade. We're gonna see. If it starts just ripping things apart, then I'll switch over and use a crown tooth blade and just have to go through a million of them. This project's gonna take a long time because I'm cutting out these pieces over and over again, like with Deadpool here. You can see that I cut out a space there for his, uh, for his thumb. Now what I do is I take that and I stick that right back in here and then I will actually cut out the thumb itself and take that thumb and I will glue it right into that spot that I, that I cut open there. So basically it's like reverse operation. You know that, that game, that, that terrible game that scared the crap out of you? Maybe it's just me and my PTSD from that game. So when it comes to glue, I, I usually use a lot of CA glue because it's fantastic, it, it dries hard, it uh, dries clear, and well, I can just keep moving on to the next piece so because it, it dries quickly. But for this project, I'm gonna try using more hide glue. I've never used hide glue with a scroll saw project, but I've used it a whole lot. Hide glue is fantastic. It dries dark, which is cool for the background. That helps out if I have any little glue squeeze out someplace, it's not the end of the world. Um, and it is very sticky, so that could come in handy. After much deliberation, I think I'm gonna go with Bobinga for the darker reds. So I've got the Bloodwood for the bright stuff, Bobinga for the other stuff. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of color variation there, but I think whenever I actually apply finish, it might be uh, more noticeable. I hope so, because I'm not gonna know until I finish the whole project and do all the work. And, and then hopefully I'm not disappointed. Regardless, we're taking a gamble. So might as well go all in and do some Bobinga. The Bobinga is slightly thinner than the Bloodwood, and that's because the hands out, that's the Bloodwood. And then as the arm goes further and further back, I need the wood to be thinner and thinner until it gets to the shoulder pad, and the shoulder pad is thicker because it's above the arm, but thinner than a lot of the other parts. So, again, future me problem. After a lot of red wood, a lot of reds, it's time to finally work on the shoulder pads, right? So the shoulder pads, I look at the picture, I see blacks and, and blue, green into white. I'm not gonna do all those variations. Instead, what I do is go with a blue mayo, which is a really great wood. It is blue, it's naturally blue. Also has a little bit of green streaks in it, some lighter streaks. So I think it might work well to get some of that light shining on the black pads, the shoulder pads. The arm protrudes out of the shoulder pads. Well, in order for me to pull that off, I'd have to cut really thin pieces and, and gradually go up, but I can't do that because some of these pieces are, are longer. So instead, I have a sanding block, a little broom, and I'm sanding and sweeping and sanding and sweeping and basically just sanding and tapering away the part of the arm that goes into the shoulder pad. So I'm just taking my blue mayo pieces, put it next to the arm and just making sure it's exactly how I want it before I glue these pieces into place. Deadpool has these leather straps that go around his shoulder so they're on top of his padding. So I've got a couple pieces of walnut here. I'm trying to figure out the right size to do it. The walnut needs to be slightly thicker than the blue mayo. But at the same time, I can't have it too thick. If I make them too thick, then it's gonna look really weird compared to some of the other parts of his body that are sticking up higher. The leather straps have these black streaks that give the illusion that it's tucking under his arm or over his arm. Well, I can't not cut those out because it would look blocky. So it's gonna have to be delicate. That's my middle name, delicate. I 
I don't like how that piece is just kind of floating there. Now, I know that it's still glued in place, but eh, I don't know. It needs something else to me. So I've got some black CA glue. I'm gonna put some of that glue in between that piece and the piece right next to it. And it's this tiny little area, it's down deep. You're not gonna see it at all, but I think it's gonna provide a whole lot more strength. We've already been doing the pads. Might as well continue it. Looking at the picture, I see a lot of darks and then it goes to that bluish sheen. I'll just use Blue Mayo for the rest of this and hopefully that'll provide enough contrast between the dark and the light. So many little cuts. So many. I'm not sure if I like the abs. That's a really hard thing to make. And I already made it once and I didn't like it. So I removed it and I remade it. And now I'm still not sure. So I think what I'm gonna do instead of doing it a third time is I'm gonna go ahead and glue in that background part that I couldn't do before because I need to have some of his body. I'm gonna put that in place. And I'm gonna live with this for a bit and keep working on it. And we'll see. I really hope I don't make it a third time. We are dealing with some really tiny pieces. So we've got black for his mask and then the red that kind of goes around the perimeter of that. You have white, which is his eye. Then there's some greenish bluish color in there that's from the light shining off his mask. I'm gonna glue all these together and assemble it so it's one piece and then install it into my artwork. I just think it'd be kind of a pain if I try to glue them in individually. All right, I'm gonna call an audible. I always like to have the darker areas of my picture really be the negative space. So that wing in the back, that kind of serves as the blacks. But as I'm looking at this, his knee pads are black, but they stick out the furthest. He also has these pads uh, that in straps that go around his forearms and his hands. And I look at those and I go, those areas I think need to be wood, not just use the negative space. I already finished the arms and I don't like to go back and add pieces later, but I feel like I have to. I did the forearm pads. I think that was a good decision. I like it, but then I wanted to add a little bit more dimension. So those straps will go around the forearm. There's one that goes around the wrist too. And if I made all those the same thickness, it would look kind of flat, I think, because his wrist is kind of bent. So I made the one across his wrist uh, thinner. I kind of made it too thin. I already glued it in place. So the only way I'm getting that out is to rip out part of his arm. And I don't want to do that. The good thing is we're using ebony, so black CA glue to the rescue. I could use that to make kind of a transition. I'll put some glue where the thicker part of the pad is onto where that wrist strap is. Once that dries, I can just take some sandpaper and kind of sand and contour that so that it looks like it just flows naturally. Sometimes you just have to stop, drink some coffee and contemplate your situation. And I'm just not liking what I'm seeing. The project looks fine, it looks fine. It's just not what I envisioned in my head. I got the arm pads in. I think those look really cool. But then it makes me think I should have added more black pieces in other areas of the project. 
and I barely used any at all. I'm gonna try something I've never done before. So if it turns out bad, give me a little bit of grace here. Um, I'm going to go back and add a ton of black and dark brown pieces to fill in a lot of the negative space, which is the opposite of the style that I usually make. But in this particular piece, I feel like it needs it. I'm gonna try to find some ebony or some really, really dark browns and then cut those very thin. I want them really, really thin and then just kind of fit them in between all the pieces I already have in place. These don't have to be cut out perfect because, well, it'd be practically impossible for me to do that anyway. Instead, what I'm thinking is more rounded shape style because the whole point to have that in there is just to add a little bit more depth. So it doesn't go from piece being way out to all of a sudden just a background. So as long as I cut my pieces into the approximate shape, and stick those down in there, I think it's gonna be good. Actually, I think it's going to make this project way better than what I'm doing right now. I'm telling myself that because, you know, I'm trying something new and I don't wanna ruin this because I already spent a long time on it. Now comes the part that I've been fearing the most, which is the legs. They flare out, so you gotta have some thin pieces for the back in his mini Deadpool area. And then they go way out to the very front of the picture. I, I don't know how to do that. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm just gonna make a whole bunch of little blocks and they're all gonna be different sizes. So I'm gonna do some thin pieces for, again, the area. And then I'm gonna go thicker and thicker and thicker as I go up the legs. They're gonna look very blocky. They're not gonna look very good. I know that I'm gonna have to come back later and do some sanding and contouring, but that's the only idea I have to pull this off. I'm on the other side of those straps that go around his thighs and you have this weird curve because you have the top of the thigh, but then it also has to curve down underneath that. So I'm still gonna do both colors, the babinga and the bloodwood. Looking at the picture, I think I'm gonna glue those two pieces together first and then I'll do a little bit of sanding and then install it all at one time. I've been looking forward to doing the knee pads. I don't know why, I just have been. So I've got this really cool piece of ebony that is just wide enough, whew, just wide enough to be able to pull these things off. I'm gonna roll with two colors. I got the ebony and then I'm gonna use some blue mayo. That's gonna be those highlights. And as we see, they're close in color, but not exactly, should be just enough contrast. You wanna see something really satisfying? If I could pull this off, look at all of these little cuts. Look at this one, all those other cuts. I'm gonna try to make these fit together. Come on, come on. That is a thing of beauty. I'm just gonna retire right now. I've been working on this project for months. Seriously, months, day after day, day after day. I'm just kind of slow, no jokes. So it makes these projects take a long time and it feels so good to finally be done with the legs, sort of. Home stretch, all I have to do is the swords, but I can't get past the ugliness of the legs. It, they need to be finished up. So we're gonna go to town with the Dremel. This is a sanding attachment and I've got this little sandpaper disc that stick right on there and, well, I'm gonna sand the crap out of it. This spinning at a million RPM, well, I guess we'll know just how good of a job I did with the glue. I am not a sanding artiste by any means. So I'm just gonna look at the picture and I'm gonna sand and look at the picture and sand and basically try to carve something and do my best Michelangelo. I have zero experience in the ways of sculpting, so I can't be too hard on myself. I think that looks pretty good. I'll take that as a win. All right, the swords. This one's a tough one because it's silver. Silver is the hardest color for me to pull off. I did try to do it on the buckles, on his leather straps and on his belt, 
But swords, well, that's a whole lot of silver. For me to have a fighting chance with this, I'm gonna need the help of some bugs. Pine, not just pine, pine that's had beetles living in it. And in doing so, they discolored the wood. So now it has these streaks of grays, greens, it's purples-ish. I don't know if there's really purple. I might be, I don't know, I might be off on the purple thing. Definitely lots of grays though. It's the best I could come up with as far as silver goes because the pine's already a light color. You add that with the grays, you put them side by side. It kind of gives the illusion of silver. The handles are pretty straightforward. I'm gonna use ebony and then I'm gonna use some of the green parts of Blue Mayho. I'll cut out some areas, stick the green part in there. It makes it look like there's ropes wrapped around the handle. At that point, all to do is take my pine, cut some parallel lines and drop them into place. We did it. We finished it. Kind of, kind of, all the pieces are in. Whew. Wow. This was a long project. Now, final touches. Want to get the whole thing nice and pretty because next is finish. Where's my can of finish at? Finish. We're going to spray it with some lacquer. It dries really fast. It looks really good. Big fan. A little bit smelly though, so wear your respirator. I sprayed multiple coats and then I let Deadpool dry overnight. Now, about two years ago, I made a custom picture frame just for this artwork, but I knew I couldn't get to it right then. So I set that frame off to the side, just waiting. Well, today's the day, time for the big reveal. This project took two years to plan out. And then I spent over five months of steady work trying to pull it off. And in the end, this is exactly what I wanted. It turned out perfect for me. This has so many little details and I know I had to go off script. I had to fill in some space with blacks and browns and essentially change my style of scroll sawing just to pull off the look that I wanted. We had to take some risk when it came to the wood species to try to pull off the colors that we needed, like the highlights in the pads, trying to have just enough difference between black and the glare of the light. One of my favorite parts of this project is something I didn't really highlight too much, which is the belt. I love the belt. And it has a lot of different colors, including silver, which we also had to turn around and carry over into the source. And that was really tough. And I think the thing that complements it the most is the cracked picture frame. I mean, seriously, Deadpool can't be in a regular picture frame. It needs to have cracks. It needs to be broken because, well, it's Deadpool. I love this thing. I'm not really sure where I'm gonna put it at. Maybe above my fireplace. I don't know. Big shout out to the Superhero community over on Patreon for supporting me and having infinite patience as I worked through this project. You guys rock. And until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.